Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, range sum of binary search tree. So binary search tree, that's not just a normal binary tree, that means it has the sorted property where for every node, everything in the right subtree is gonna be greater than that node, everything in the left subtree is gonna be less than that node and the definition is recursive. So it's true for every single node in the tree. I will say that for the most part, it being a binary search tree actually doesn't make the solution any more efficient. You'll see what I mean in just a second. What we want to do is given this binary search tree, as well as two numbers, low and high, that form an inclusive range of values. So for this example, we have seven and 15. We want to get every single node in this tree that is in this range, including the edges seven and 15. So we have, uh, it looks like three elements that satisfy that. Then we wanna add all of them together and return the result. So in this case, that would be 32. Now, the first thing that you might think of, given that we have this range, you can think of a binary search tree as a array that is sorted because that's kind of how you can traverse a binary search tree if you do in order traversal. So with in order traversal, we will go through the values in this order. And when we do that, it's pretty easy for us to get the values that are actually within that range. Now, the downside is in order traversal is big O of N time complexity and the fact that this is sorted actually doesn't matter that much. Even if the values were in like a random order and we had to just like pick them and they're sparsely like populated like this, we could still add them up and we could still do that in O of N time. So this being a BST doesn't really do anything for us. So this is one very valid solution to the problem. There's actually another solution though. I guess it's slightly more optimal, but the time and space complexity is still going to be big O of N and you'll see why in a second. The idea is that when we start at the root, it's 10. We check, is this value greater than the max value that we're looking for, which is 15 again, remember? Is it greater than 15? Nope. Is it less than seven? No. So therefore it does fall within this range and we can add this to the result. Not only that though, since this value is in this range, we now recursively go to the left subtree and the right subtree looking for more values that fit in this range. Now, when we get here to five, it gets interesting because five is actually even less than the smallest value that we're looking for. So what do we do? We definitely don't add this to the result and we definitely don't go to the left subtree. Why would we? There are only smaller values over there anyway. So in this case, when the value is even smaller than the smallest, we just recursively go to the right subtree. And this one is seven. It technically does fall within the range. And then we would go to the left and right subtree of seven. It doesn't have anything. So that's kind of the base case where we would return zero from each side. And then we'd end up returning seven from here. And then seven would eventually be added back to the parent here with 10. Same thing on the right side. We have 15. 15 is not greater than the largest value that we're looking for. So this is again valid. We are gonna return 15. Now we are gonna continue the recursion. We're not gonna go to the right subtree or at least we technically don't need to, but maybe the way I coded up will actually end up going here. But we would definitely wanna go to the left subtree where we would find nothing, it's gonna return zero, and then we're gonna go back up. So this solution isn't that much better than the previous one, but in some cases it might prevent us from traversing large portions of the tree. And it's not that much more complicated to code up either. So let's get into that now. And by the way, if you're wondering where does that big O of N memory complexity come from, it comes from the recursive call stack when we uh, implement this solution recursively, which in the worst case can be the height of the tree, which if it's a balanced tree, it can be log N, but in the worst case, if it's not balanced, it can be big O of N. Now let's code it up. This time, I think we probably don't even need a helper function. So I'm actually just gonna directly use this function that we're given for the recursion. So here, let's check if not root, that's the base case, we return zero. Can't really get a range sum from an empty binary search tree. Next, let's check, is root.val, we know it's not null, is it greater than high? 
If that's the case, let's return the recursive function range sum BST on the left subtree. We're looking for smaller values than this if it was greater than high. If it's the other case, if it's actually lower than low, then we return self.range sum BST from the right subtree. We're looking for larger values than this because this is too small. Now, if neither of those execute, then we know for sure that this value is in this range from low to high. So let's return self.range sum BST, calling it from the left subtree as well as from the right subtree, adding those together and also adding to this the current root dot value because we know this value is definitely within that range. I think this is the whole code, but I do notice that I forgot to pass in low and high, so I'm gonna quickly do that. They're not really changing, so it's pretty easy for us to do that. Just gonna copy and paste this a few times. I can see this line has gotten quite long. This is the final code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.